Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the letter to the church in Rome. As Paul instructs them on ways to be, to live, to love. So hear these words. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let us pray. Lord, I ask that you allow your Holy Spirit, that fire to fall upon us, to allow us to know, to feel, to experience your presence in this place. Help us. Help us, Lord, to make choices, to discern your will. Lord, these words that you have placed upon my heart, I ask that you allow them to find root and nurturement within the hearts and minds and bodies and souls of these, your children. May this time be one for Asbury to find and discern the path at the crossroads. Lord, be with us. Amen. Last week, Pastor Karen shared with us the first of the three series of great clips with a clip coming from the movie Castaway, where at the very end, Tom Hanks is standing in the middle of a cross section, and he's trying to figure out whether he's going to go east or west or north and south, and he's perplexed by all that has happened to him, all that has swirled around him, the changes that have been devastating to his life, the opportunities and the rescue and the possibilities of new connections and new life that lie ahead of him. So today we go into the second section of Great Clips and we'll be using a piece out of The Matrix the first movie towards the very beginning of that. And it's an easy setup. Nero, the star of the movie, has been living his life, but something is different. Something is missing. Something is going on within him that he doesn't understand. He sees things that aren't quite the same as everybody else sees them. He doesn't quite get what is all around him. And he has a yearning to know, to feel, and to experience even more. So a mentor comes into his life to try to explain it to him and to allow him to maybe know a little bit more. And so we were at that part of the movie where Morpheus is talking to him and explaining the choice that he has to make. The matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind.
Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. We have a choice to make. This movie illustrates a theological concept, but in a scientific, scientific, not scientific, science fiction realm that allows us to explore what it means to make that choice to follow Christ. The transformation of our mind, the renewal of our bodies, to be a living sacrifice for the continuation of what God is asking us to do. Like Nero in this movie, we have that same choice to make. But the good news, unlike Nero, this was his only choice, chance. God continues to follow after us, giving us that chance every day throughout eternity. But today, I want to talk to you because we are standing at a crossroads. Asbury is standing at this crossroads. Each and every one of us daily stand at a crossroads between what God wants us to do and what the secular world wants us to do. You may remember we asked for your prayers last week for a ministry assessment team that met last Sunday afternoon, and I want to thank you for praying and keeping us in prayer for those hours that we met because it was felt as we discussed and as we discerned and as we thought and dreamed and allowed God to work within the group. God was there. God continues to move and to discern, and the process is not over. So continue to please pray for that as choices are made, as decisions are made by the church and by individuals, that you may do what Paul has told the Romans to do. So that's what I want to share with you. Because, you see, Paul tells them, do not be conformed to this world. And of course, the world is not what he's talking about, the world that God created, but the world that humanity created that is in conflict with it, all that is Christian. But be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Paul does not just mean for you to get more education, to do more learning, because you see in the Greek world, your mind is all of you, everything that encompasses you. You need to be transformed completely. And you do that so that you may discern the will of God. There's two steps for the transformation and renewal. And they go hand in hand, but they are still two separate things for you to be doing. The first is to read your Bible, to study it deeply, to discuss it with friends, church members, to go deep and to understand and try to con and grasp the concepts of what God has done, what God is doing, what God will continue to do through our church, through our community, and around the world. And the second part 
to wrap in with that is to pray for the Holy Spirit to descend upon your heart and upon your soul so that the combination of the two will change you in a way that will amaze everybody around you. Because you see, renewal is that combination of the Spirit and the Word of God. Because you see, only a renewed mind, only a transformed mind can test and approve that discernment. It can only appreciate and determine what God's will is and how that fits into your life. Without that training, without that practice, God's will may wash past you in a moment's notice. One of the songs I listen to as part of my spiritual preparation on Sunday morning before I preach, I go into my office and shut the door and, and crank it up a little bit, is a ta- song by Stephen Curtis Chapman called The Walk. And the chorus rings out with these words. You can run with the big dogs, you can fly with the eagles, you can jump through all the hoops, you can climb your ladder to the top. But none of that matters without the walk. And that's what Paul was trying to let us know in this scripture. That unless we walk the walk of Christ, that unless we read our scriptures, unless we pray for the Holy Spirit, unless we allow that to wash through us and help us to discern what's God's will for our lives so that we may know what is good and acceptable and perfect, nothing else matters. You can be a big dog. You can be flying with the eagles. You can climb that ladder of success. But unless you have those other things pouring through your life so that you can discern what is good and what is acceptable and what is perfect, you will not discern what is good and acceptable and perfect. And it's a practice that takes lots and lots of practice. But unless we make the choice to take the Holy Spirit red pill and to invite God into our lives every morning when we wake up to allow us to think anew, to live anew, to be an example of what is good and acceptable and as close to perfect as our human lives can allow us to get, so that the entire world can see Christ living through us. That is how we will know that we walked down the right pathway at the crossroads. And like I said, the good news is that even if you walk down the wrong pathway to the crossroads, God's going to stand there with another red pill and another blue pill and give you a choice again so that you can go down this pathway or you can go down this pathway, allowing you to discern and change and move so that the better you get at it, the better the church gets at it, the better the world gets at it, the closer we get to the kingdom, the closer we get to thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The closer we get to that perfection that we are so looking for in our lives, that space that is missing God, that part of us that yearns to be in connection, that part that longs for community. So this next week, I'm gonna ask you to continue to pray for the ministry discernment team, for Asbury, for each other and for yourself, that the Holy Spirit may continue to pour within you to allow you to know and to do what is good and acceptable and perfect in God's plan. Amen.